release. I'm Mr. Smiley, and you're watching KC Anthem on KCAnthem.com. I'm here with uh, one of Kansas City's newest and most explosive bands, Evelyn Awake. Thanks for coming on the show, guys. Woo! <laughs> That's good yeah. Thanks for having us. Very happy to have you. I know you guys got a big show coming up. I think the name of it is Rockfest. Uh, I think I it's think a... Might there's... as well kick it off with talking about that, because there's really not much bigger we could talk about, I would expect. There's a couple of people going to be there, I think. Yeah. yeah. How many people do you think are going to be at that show Two, this year? Two, three hundred, maybe. Yeah, yeah maybe tops. Yeah, right. Like, you know. And I expect the KC Anthem will add about five more. That's right. Just to save you a lot. That's right. right. On, so. Go on. Aim for the big time, you know? <laughs> exactly. Aim high. Now, how'd you get on that show, Rockfest? There's so many bands around here who would uh, sell their souls to get on that show. Is well, that how you did it? Well, yeah. I mean, a long time ago, I sold it. But no, I... Uh, it was just a relationship that had been working for quite a while, and I think that 
this band with the performances that we had and uh a couple of great legs up a couple helping hands along the way and uh and some hard work a lot of hard work by us and to really push forward fast was our essential goal was just to get everything together as fast as possible because we've all been in bands that did pretty well and we were looking to uh, just get right back to it as quick as possible and you are a fairly new band you haven't been around for a, a long time but i've noticed that you've received a very warm welcome in the kansas city music scene how do you explain how that happens well i think that comes down to one thing and one thing only and i think that's the respect that we give people as individuals i don't think that has anything to do with any of our music at all i think you can be an amazingly talented musician and be a bad person and no one will respect you but i think when it comes down to the main thing is just we all respect and and appreciate people regardless of whether they can do anything for us whether they do whether they don't whether they can't whether we can do something for them anything it really is not about the relationships to our advantages it's just about building natural relationships based on friendships and i think being respectful and showing respect and and coming up the proper way is the way that people are going to really respect your band and just respect you as an individual and want to help you because they want to see you succeed as a person not it has i don't i i think that the talent is just another layer of what they look at but i think the first thing that they're going to pay attention to is are these guys someone i even want to help right and that's it so just being honest and genuine, you'd say, has helped you a lot with, with getting so warm a welcome so quickly. Yeah, I, I definitely think that we've all talked about it being something that we wanted to, like, we wanted to admit that, you know, that vibe outside of us. And I know these guys will tell you, too, and, and I'm already taking all their talking, but I'll, you know, kick it to them. But they, they, they too, exemplify, like, excellence when it comes to you know, being out in these areas and, and understanding this isn't a party scene, it's a work scene and you go to do something and you have fun while you're doing it, but you've got to be able to show that you can have fun and at the same time, like, you know, put out the best, most respectful attitude and, you know, effort that you can, that you can possibly do. That sounds very business-like. Uh, you've probably all been in, in quite a few bands or I don't know, a few bands. You've been playing for a long time. Right, and I yes. know that you, Tyler, were in the Leo Project yes. at one time, and uh, so you think that all your knowledge and, and being veterans of the music scene has helped you to dive right in and and get noticed as well. I definitely think that's a big part of it. I think these guys too, because they've had their own walks and their bands, and kind of had to, you know. I think with anything you learn in life, if you kind of trip and fall and, and pick yourself back up, you know. Mistakes are mistakes. Failure only happens whenever you stop trying. And so one of the big ways that you never fail is that you just make mistakes. And you, just, you get back up and you keep moving forward. And the minute that you stop is when you purely <clears throat> fail. So, you know, and and same thing with these guys. They they have been, they have walked their walk in their bands and individually and, and uh, have all had great success on their own too. So pulling this thing together was literally just these guys being you know good people and good musicians and being like well i'd love to be in a group that you know promotes both of those things just being good people being humble humility and and generosity and and being able to be talked to you know people love to be to walk up to a band that's approachable a band that's not approachable is not interesting so hey that's really real stuff right there i, I like what you have to say Let's check out another song from you guys, and we'll come back. We're going to open up the phone lines at some point. We're going to call. We got one band member who couldn't make it in today, right? The bass player? Yeah. Yep, he's fired. Yeah. <laughs> Josh, you're listening. He's fired. We're going to listen to uh, a song from your new album that hasn't even been released yet. Yes. So I'm very happy to be playing it right now. This is uh, your single, right? Yes. Spinning colors, paint a picture not so easy on the eyes. Let's give it one more try. All on another, just to make it through the night. Tell me everything will be alright. Lonely, lonely, alone tonight. Telling the secrets they held inside. A moment has long since died But I'll go on forever Take what you wanted from me 
That was forever off of your new album from crisis to clarity right right yes on, sir and that has not been released when is the release the release is june 24th at the beaumont club we're gonna do a cd release party and come down there and get some specials on all of our shirts and hoodies and cds and so, there's like how many bands are on there oh, like seven seven eight. seven yeah, seven eight right bands there's the flyer bands. for your show on june 24th i'm there sure it's going to be a badass time uh yeah. special guest surrogate sons dirt grandstand restraint canvas and second signal echo vendetta too it's another band that a lot of people are kind of raving about you said they got rocklahoma yeah i think yep. they're they're doing rocklahoma a rocklahoma so. artists so they're they're doing pretty well too so yeah, definitely. It's a it's a show worth coming out to, and we're we're promoting it pretty heavily. So we got tickets and stuff. You guys can get online and and uh, hit us up for tickets and the the pre sale, or you guys can just get them at the door. It'll be more expensive, I think. But whatever you want to do, man, just come party. <laughs> yeah, we will be having a soft release for the album at Rockfest, so we'll be selling the album. Yep. Yep. If you're gonna okay. be at Rockfest, we're gonna have a pre release. You buy a brand new record there. One of the so is there ones. gonna be stands at Rockfest for all your stuff? Yeah, there'll be their yeah. their merch people will be selling mm -hmm. our stuff, yep. and uh, we'll have you know some shirts and we'll have a CD and stuff up there. So if everyone goes up there and checks it out, you can pick up the CD there. But otherwise, we won't sell the CD until the CD release. So. Cool. So Rockfest is the only place you can get it ahead of time. Yeah, better yep. get, it, better get it yeah. Rockfest. We'll rock it out before the release. So. Yep. Who who recorded that album? Our bass player was uh, was the guy that we went to for the job, and he wasn't our bass player at the time. Hmm, Josh, where are you? And uh, <laughs> yeah, by the way, not here today. <laughs> so uh, no, but he uh, he did an incredible job on it, man. He worked really hard, and sure. and uh, the guy's got his own career, and as well as that, really gave us a lot of. A lot of love and, and support and tried to get that record done and 
we we all had all sorts of things on trying the typical hang-ups on trying to get a yeah. record done and and uh but we persevered and really like stuck to it because our our goals were set with timers man and we i think we're like just beating the buzzer on some things so we're we're feeling good about it i think everybody that picks up a record though will be really surprised you know they're gonna love the release they're gonna, you know i waited for it forever but i finally got it and kicks ass it's solid it's definitely solid it sounds really good so it's gonna be it worth sounds, the wait. it sounds amazing to me awesome i'm, I'm very excited I, I'm, yeah i'm very glad you guys are gonna have an album coming out soon rock fest is gonna be awesome and i was wondering if you're a little nervous about playing in front of all those people what is it like what are you thinking about to get up there and do that i kind of explain it to these guys and i love like because i've only done one show that was kind of of that far but besides that dude we're all kind of in the same boat we're all kind of walking into this like it's gonna be kind of big but the one thing i took from the one show i did that size was after a certain amount of people it's it's like uncomprehensible by a human brain it just doesn't really matter yeah. like it just it's right. like after after so many rows of people heads become small globs of color and you just don't you don't realize it's just it's like you it's, can you can literally say anything and they just go ah. yeah Woo! i guess that's too that that too i mean you do have people who react to your play but i guess when it comes down to it um it's more nerve-wracking to play i took nick down and he played in front of like a hundred of my relatives <laughs> and that's and well and you came down too and did the other yeah. the family yeah. reunion yeah. deal too did the reunion same the concept man family. yeah lie on you are weird. <laughs> and uh and uh you know that that's more nerve-wracking than playing in front of that many people just because it's like these people are perfect strangers man so it's like yeah you just go out there and you play to your abilities and and uh, you know, if you prepared properly for a show like that, the nervousness really only comes down to damn. I hope I look good today. That's all that matters, because you know that you prepared the right way to, to play a show like that. Something that is very different about your band is the fact that you have three guitarists, right? Yep. Yeah. How yeah. does that work? How much more complicated is it to write music for three guitars? It's basically, how do you utilize it? I mean, you, there's yeah. bands that use two guitars that. Um, don't <clears throat> properly utilize you know playing the same power chord and doing that and don't switch it up but I mean if you you know you harmonize the right parts and you know have octave chords over different choruses and you can utilize it to where it sounds much more orchestrated and yeah. mm -hmm. a lot fuller sound yeah that and, and when you're in the studio essentially you record three guitar parts worth of music on a, on a, on a well produced record there's mm -hmm. usually there's usually your main guitar parts and maybe there's some harmony-esque parts and then there's these overlying guitar parts that almost every record if you listen to a majorly produced record has these overlying guitar parts and those parts usually aren't replicated live because you're unable to but and the difference in this is that we get to delegate all these parts out to everybody and everybody can we can really make this sound pretty full live because of the fact that we have this but yeah you can really clutter sound with too many guitars yeah, it or you can muddy just how you mesh. How you we, it. we got somebody that's calling in like crazy i don't know if they're your bass player we're gonna go ahead and answer this real quick hello you're on the air this is uh, mr smiley you're on kc anthem with evelyn awake hi there this is dana calling in well hello dana awesome how are you doing today <laughs> i'm doing great i'm just watching the interview here and i'm just just wanted to call in and show some love to the guys. So this is Dana from Mad Libby, and Mad Libby's going to be on the show in a couple months. Right on, oh, right, right on. Dana. How you doing? I love yeah. Band. Yes. Hey guys, Loved them. how are you? Good. How are you? I'm just super duper. i uh, just calling in to say hey to the gang and uh, just letting them know I'm a big fan. Love you guys. Love your show. Uh, I did have a question for you all. Um, who wrote Forever, and what is it about? Um. Well, I wrote forever, and it's about. Uh, I think in the in the general standpoint, it's kind of about like this industry that we're in, and how um, sometimes things aren't quite acceptable to one, uh, you know, industry mogul or another. You know, whether it be the uh, the style of music you play, whether it be your looks, which is a big thing I've dealt with throughout this whole path that I've walked. In the music industry um right or whether it's those things and so it's like it's a, it's a song that you could really like generically put for anybody that you felt like is going to just use you up for what they want to use you for and then and then throw you in the garbage and that's like 
what the song is about because we have to take a stand and and, and stand up for ourselves and tell yeah. them this this relationship is poisonous and it's not good for me and it's over forevermore. Right, right. And we're pretty much all disposable at some point is basically what you were saying. Right, well, and we feel that way, but we're not. We're not that way. Right. We oh, like, people... No, absolutely. No, you guys aren't, but I'm just saying as a whole. <laughs> Well, and, no, and I, I, mean, I mean, in the in the the standpoint of the fact that, like, you know, we all have people who, when it comes down to it, the most important things that we have are our family and the people that love us uh, unconditionally, and so therefore, um, the ones you can stand up for yourself and tell them, look, you, you can you can take what you want, but I'm not going to give it to you anymore. It's done, and that's kind of what uh, right. That's kind of what that song was a stand up for for anyone who felt like they've been used and and not given it at least a, at least a thank you you know was it well written, i i really love the song and i'm really looking forward to the to the album <laughs> and I'm, I'm stoked about rock fest you guys are the best um thank couldn't you. have couldn't have happened to a better group of guys been a fan of y'all for a long time and and every project you've been in so this is just kind of like a nice little dream team package we got going on here with evelyn awake so well thanks it's always good to hear from you that. It's always good to hear from you. I've watched you play quite a few times. I think you're awesome. Yeah, thanks for calling well, in, Dana. That's an awesome question. And Mad Libby's going to be on here pretty soon in a month or so, right? Yeah, I think next month. I think June 10th, I think, we'll be there. So Sweet. So everybody stay tuned for that. I've had you on the show once before with Wu Band, and that turned out really good. That and is we, correct. We managed to yeah, uh, get censored by Prince. <laughs> somehow when you guys did the when doves cry cover and hey and, man if you can piss off the purple one you're not doing too bad <laughs> <laughs> all right dana thanks for calling in we'll see you in a, a month you or bet. so Love you guys. see ya good caller i just i haven't even officially opened the phone lines yet but i guess i might as well because i we've already got another caller so all right the phone lines are officially open 816-399-5286 go ahead and uh, answer this caller here Hello, you're on the air. You're watching Casey Anthem with Evelyn Awake. Oh, really? I was trying to order a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, we was... know this guy. Don't you work for us? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't call it that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Company liaison. I don't really do anything. I think they can attest to that. Is this, oh, the, is this the missing member of the band? This this is, we have the bass this, player. This is. <laughs> Hey, how, how you doing? I'm I glad you be there to accept in. my award. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, Josh, here's... what are you doing? Dude, I'm actually uh, hanging out by the koi fish pond. <laughs> All nice, right. nice. We recorded our record uh, out in a place kind of North Kansas City. And, right and at the koi a, fish pond. And there is, yeah, there is a koi fish pond right outside with a little miniature golf at course. The and, and, nice. At the bottom of a waterfall. This all sounds like something out of a Lisa Frank dream. <laughs> but it's glitter and it's, it's a precious dream. moments moment. It's yeah. right. That's right. So are you out there getting some work done today? Or are you working on some music, uh, mastering, recording? I am. I'm actually uh, recording a uh, uh, local blues artist called Brandon Miller Band, and uh, nice. just kind of living the dream currently. <laughs> well, cool. You got a question, sir? Yeah. <laughs> you have a question for your own band. <laughs> The only question I think is the same question the band has, and is is, is Nick's boyfriend real or is it fake? <laughs> it's Bingo! A, it's a it's a figment of my imagination, and you know I'm kind of sensitive about it, but we'll work at it. <laughs> so, well, hey. no, just uh, I'm I'm just one question is uh, to you, Frank. Like, are you excited for Rockfest? Yeah. Well, I think I think I'm going to ask you that right now, and. I'd like for you to answer that. Me? I'm stoked. I think that uh, it's a great opportunity. I think that uh, 98.9 The Rock has definitely been treating us really well, and uh, yeah. I think yeah. it's just a, a really good well. avenue for our fans to see us and for us to meet a lot more people in Kansas City that haven't heard us yet. And, uh, you know, just really see, you know, see the guys from 7 Dust again and just have a good time and rock out and be in an environment that we really thrive in. I got a question for you, Josh. Um, what's the difference in some of your past um, styles of crowds, and the di what's the difference that you might have enjoyed being in this genre as compared to the ones in the last? Not to say the ones in the past were bad, but just some things you might like now. 
Oh, man, let me tell you, there's like 8 million things I could tell you I like a lot better than the past crowds I've had to deal with. Yeah. Um, like, uh, I, I would say that our fan base and, I, and, the, and the people that come out to our shows that I get the honor of, uh, you know, hugging their neck and shaking their hand and sharing a drink with is that they actually care and that they actually can tell what we do is a passion of ours and that we love it and that we have fun and that, that we make that connection with them on stage and I haven't felt that in the past with previous genres, and it's, you know, I feel like uh, I don't have enough, you know, hair dye on my head to <laughs> matter to some of those kids. So I'm glad to be in a band where, you know, image isn't what it's all about. It's about rocking out and having a good time, and I think my friends and, and this, this culture that I'm in is a lot more accepting of that, and actually I'm just a lot better about it. Very cool. Hey, are you a little bit nervous about playing in front of the, I don't know, 100,000 people that are going to be playing at Rockfest? What's your, how do you feel about that? <laughs> you know, honestly, and I'm the worst person to ask because I, uh, I just don't, I, I, you know, like I am, when I, when I play on stage, I'm concerned about that first three rows of people. And, you know, I, I'm afraid that if I look beyond that, I just might have a stroke. So I'm just going to focus on those folks. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's that's what Tyler was saying, is that after so many people, everybody just starts to blend together, and it's it's easier that way, I guess. You can only get so so uh, so many people that you can even comprehend, and right. then beyond that, yeah. So, hey, thanks for calling yeah, in, all, man, the, the missing right, bass player, and, and it's very nice talking to you, and next time we have Evelyn Awake on, you got to make it out. Deal, I will. Let's, uh, let's, let's, why don't you book some studio time, Frank, and then uh, we'll do it live from my studio. Hey, and th for those of you guys that don't know, Josh an amazing engineer, producer. He does a lot of stuff, man. He's the one that's uh, really helped to make our record blossom to where it is. So if you guys he really like what you hear, if Josh. you like what you heard there, you guys go check out Josh. Get on, you know, and hit Josh, Josh Barber, Barber up on Facebook. And, uh, yep. And uh, you guys can get a hold of him about some recording stuff. Yeah, great job, brother, and it's good talking to you. Yeah, good talking to you. You guys, I'll see you later. See you, man. All right, we get got, back to work. We got, gone when about it. <laughs> we got another caller. That was a good call, obviously, <laughs> the missing member of the band. Hello, you're watching Casey Anthem. We're here with Evelyn Awake. Is anybody there? Party. Hello. Yes, hello. How you doing? You're here with Evelyn Awake good. on Casey Anthem. Cool. This is uh, Eric and Michael from Burning Symmetry. Oh, sweet. Uh, up, Very nice. Yeah. 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 We had good, you, good. We, we had your band on not too long ago. We got some uh, killer performances. I was going to mention you during this interview, even because uh, you had some good things to say about Evelyn Awake. Yeah, we did. Great band. Thank you, man. Thank Appreciate you. that very much. I did that 2012 song. It's pretty cool. Oh. <laughs> um, we were wondering, uh, what do you guys do to prepare for a big show, so-called Rockfest or Freakers Ball? Well, I'd say that <clears throat> the first thing is never to psych yourself up and really think about the big show at hand. But um, I'll say this, that like this preparation for a show like this, um, especially for a young band that's just trying to um, get everything moving with the, with the business side of it, you, you don't pump yourself up. You know too much but at the same time you understand the vital importance of a show like this and you prepare all the business what you do is you focus your efforts on all the business around you and how you can further your business with this show and not just thinking of it as the 30 minutes that you're on stage but thinking of it as, uh, of like as the everlasting impact you'll have after that 30 minutes so that's kind of what you prepare for is the the effect not the cause okay cool cool Hey, good question, man. To... Thanks, thanks for calling in, and uh, you can see the everyone who's watching can see the Burning Symmetry interview on KCAnthem.com and some great performances yep, yep. on uh, YouTube.com slash KCAnthem, so everybody should check that out right now. Whose dad do I always meet Me. at Brew Top? That's Eric's dad. That's Eric's, Eric, it's your dad that I meet at Brew Top all the time? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's his name, Mike? Yep, Mike Quattella. Yeah, I like Mike, man. He's all right. Super shout out to Mike. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You tell him I said hi. Cool. All right, guys. Thanks for calling in. We'll talk to you later. See you. See you guys. Very nice. Burning Symmetry, awesome band. Yep. Awesome band. 
And Your dad's a super nice guy. Dude. Yeah, dude. We're going to play another song from you guys, and then we're going to come back. We're going to take some more calls. We're going to talk about current events, a few other things. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's a that's another new song from your new album, From Crisis to Eternity, right? And what's the name of that song? Crisis, Crisis to Clarity. Clarity. Crisis to Clarity. And okay. that song is called A Thousand yeah. Miles. It's kind of a... Oh, I said Crisis to Eternity. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right, man. We're, we're going to change it right now because you said yeah. that. We're going to change it. It it's sounds cool. cool. It sounds cool, now. right? No. Yeah, we, From Crisis to Clarity. I'm sorry. We are... Uh, that song is kind of a... I had a friend of mine that lived in St. Louis when we started this band. That song was... Uh, Kind of dedicated to her. She lost her brother in the uh, in the war in Afghanistan, and so that song was just kind of a dedication to soldiers and troops, and saying that you know I, I'm thinking of those people I lost, whether it's down the street in my country or a million miles away somewhere else. It's just we're always thinking of those people that we lost. So I dig that tune. That's fun. That's the one that you can bang your head to. Okay. Okay. So do you do a lot of political uh, lyrics in your songs? Not necessarily. I think, I don't ever like, I mean, for this particular band, a lot of this stuff has double meanings. It's going to take a meaning into your own life, and it's also going to take on the meaning of the story of Evelyn Awake, which is the, the uh, you guys can check that out on EvelynAwake.com. Just get on there and click on the film strip, and uh, 
you guys can hear some or see some of the uh, the story for the Evelyn Awake story and check out you know the CD and the DVD and everything else you want to hear. Okay, I got Evelyn, EvelynAwake.com pulled up right now. I know this is a pretty interesting website. It's very well done. It's just it's basically like what the the audience gets to see what what the the A and R's and what the people that we're trying to sell our band to get to see. They're gonna get the chance to see what an actual press kit essentially looks like, and that's yeah. what that is. And uh, and because of the fact that you know there's we have we're I think we're connected to seven social network sites. Um, EvelynAwake.com is really built for the people who are wanting and interesting and looking into the band for business reasons as well as the people who just want to go check out the band and stay in touch with what's going on so yeah it's a very badass website i have to admit uh who did that for you uh well i think i don't know My, what, yeah what else has he done um because <clears throat> he's done a lot of stuff he's done my he plays our, guitar in the band one degree difference he's, he's our bassist brother his name's Mike. he was yeah, also in seeking surreal too wasn't he mm-hmm. he's yeah, seeking he surreal guitar and, yeah. and trent's band seeking surreal and uh, and Maya is a real talented guy. He's got a lot of he's got a lot of good ideas about that stuff. It was really neat to because as guys that don't know what you're doing, we're sitting there going, "Well, can you do this?" And he's just making it come to life. So that was pretty cool. Actually, Kudos to to Maya, man. He did a good job on everything. He's got a hand in a lot of our artwork and yeah. and, and the majority of what we have visually. He's definitely had a piece of so. And Maya nice. actually being our bass player's brother. Yep. So hats yeah. off to him, man. He's been a huge yeah. help in the whole. This super, team doesn't doesn't set. Helpful. We can't fit our team on this couch. This uh-huh. is just the yeah. uh, this is just uh-huh. the musicians. So. Right. So you guys got a lot of people behind you. That's 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 good and it's obvious. I would say that's why you guys are doing so well in the scene. You're you're not just standing on your own. You've got uh-huh. a lot of help. Not, our team's mm-hmm. uh, the best. We got we got a lot of the best people teching for us. We Dude, that's people. yeah. Those yeah. are the people that make it happen, man. Yeah. People like Rody Mike and people like. Buster and Alex and DJ and all these guys that that Work the guys that make off. our shows possible, um, you know, and these guys are the people that that really like put the fabric of the show together. Yep. That are the seams behind the fabric, I guess. Yep. So we had Burning Symmetry just call in a second ago, or a couple of the guys. I wanted to ask you what other bands that you've played with around here, and who and who are some bands that that you support in Kansas City. I mean there's a, there's a lot of great bands yeah. right now. Definitely yeah. in like we in gotta like. give our props to in like yep. in like love they've been, they've been hanging out with us since we started and coming yeah. out to our little talented little and humble shows. man. Yeah, yeah, those yeah. people are just they're good people. Uh yes. restraint. Restraint's always there. Yeah nine volt junkie. Yeah nine volt junkie for sure. Sidewise they're doing yeah, really sidewise, well. Yeah sidewise uh I mean I would do Shaman's Harvest which oh, is yeah, another Shaman's Harvest. I'm a Signum. huge Shaman yeah Signum AD from Wichita if you guys ever heard Signum AD check they them out. I'm, awesome. I'm working on getting them on. I'm Shaman's on it. Man we'll, we'll make that happen. We'll make that happen. Okay. Yeah guaranteed. But we'll uh they're 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 an awesome band. I love I love being able to really endorse bands that we like and like we played a show just this past weekend at the Blue Note in Columbia, Missouri, and it was a uh, Signum AD us and Shaman's Harvest and I yeah I really love the fact that we got to play that show yeah, it was cause like awesome, I also awesome like to show. give a shout out to they're not local but there's a band called Show Baby yes Sioux Falls South Dakota man. man and they're they're incredible their singer's been on the Jimmy Kimmel show they're worth checking out if nothing we, else they've been on national television they're good we so. promise that we're gonna bring them here for a show yep. we will bring them here to play with us sometime this summer after. we're gonna be working on a show with some of those bands I mentioned there and, and as well as Show Baby and stuff uh, in like the July August area you know if we can't I, I wanna bring Show Baby down ASAP yeah. man they took care of us up in and South Dakota and phenomenal well, definitely in like uh, I recognize that band because we had them on not too long ago. Yep. They gave a, a great acoustic performance. Tell Cassie she can't have my birthday. That's my birthday. <laughs> She's gonna get a new hey, birthday. Yeah, she can have the thirteenth, the eleventh, the twelfth is mine. <laughs> so Cassie, you know what I mean. So you have the, the same birthday. Get off my birthday, okay? Nice. I'd like to tell I've always been cool to you. Child support checks. That's right. That's right. Get a little backed up. We don't have to send the sheriff yeah. after you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, you don't know. So. How about promoter-wise around here? Who's helped you out the most? Who are some promoters that you want to give a shout-out to? Well, I think I think essentially, man, you you got to look at all these guys as being huge helps because yeah. when it really... They help out the whole scene. It's yeah, like everybody. Really yeah, and they help out the whole scene, and they really, like, when it comes down to them, you know, we need a promoter to be a, a major help to us and get us in places we haven't walked in. Mm-hmm. And for them, they need a good band to stand behind. And we're not the only one in town by far. 
However, it's nice to have a good uh, relationship between the two. To have a, a these these club promoters like Jim Kilroy and uh, and to have Dwayne and and to have. Um, okay, so we got uh, Tom I, Yeah, Tom Capafoli and that. Mm-hmm. What another really good guy, man? That's a hard. He's a hard worker. Had Tom Capafoli on a couple weeks yeah. ago. Tom's a really hard worker. I've seen him quite a few places, and he's a good guy. And Tom, I'm sorry, I, I just went blank for a second, but we've had a couple drinks and. Uh, Yes, we're yes, fun. We, yes, we all, that's right. we all have. Um, yes, that's right. Oh, they can see that glass on there, can't they? But oh yeah, we got to keep it. There's a there's a storyline behind the Evelyn Awake, right? When you go to the website, there's there seems to be a story as a, a movie like story. Yeah, it's a little film strip on the website. Yep. You can actually click that film strip, and the whole thing pops up as the actual story. To uh, it's a it's a movie that. That, well, a kind of a, an idea for a movie. Yeah, that, really. that, it's a concept the behind right the it's right. a concept behind the name of the band, and it's about you know I mean it's you can awesome. read about it. It's about the girl basically, Evelyn Awake, and it tells the story of how it's uh, how her name or how what what the name means. And it's basically the beginning skeleton story because what we're going to end up doing is growing it and making it a little bit bigger, and we're going to have some uh, some really cool like feature. You know something. We're gonna do something with the actual story to incorporate it with. Well, because we've had a couple of different like ideas and theories thrown at us. I mean, there's some possibilities of of movies. I've had people talk to me about the Sundance Film Festival, and then I've had um, some some ideas with maybe having some sort of comic book setting for it. So we have a lot of openings for it. But it's a it's a story that it's got some parts of my of of just you know a story of a woman who who loses her family and and comes unraveled and has blackouts and and doesn't know how to put all these things together what's going on but there's also you know remnants of just just the way the story can move someone to understand what it's like to struggle through life and and try to find out what your purpose is and that's what the whole entire story is ultimately about and like for us like you know Trent you know Minus Trent. Trent has done really well in his own life, but the rest of us, we have, we lean on music as being our, our, uh, our provider in all in all natures, and that's 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 with respect to Trent as well as with respect to the rest of us, because we're all just trying to do what's you know right and what our path is supposed to be, and so I think that a lot of this stuff just comes into play as like we all have these struggles and this story kind of exemplifies the struggles that this woman has and we all kind of have those same struggles so it's definitely a story that everyone can relate to on one level or another whether you know how it, regardless of how you grew up or anything like that so. that's really different and, and really interesting to me that you would be writing is it a script or is it just a story that can be made into a script man it's future? it's basically it's a treatment and uh, it was mm-hmm. a dream and the treatment is just the most shortest form of longhand you could write out a story like that and just kind of telling the overall skeleton of the story and what's going to happen is that story is going to be um, basically for any of you guys that are going to go to the website evelynawake.com and check that out you're going to read the story but it's going to be a very very skeletal structure of the story you're going to really get the story itself from when we begin to uh, uh, build this this kind of online way to get to it so that'll be coming up soon so you guys keep in touch with that um because we have we actually have a uh our corporate sponsor unleash tattoo is uh down at 34th and main in kansas city and they're the people that we're kind of working with to maybe design some sort of way that we can tell this story and have their artists draw up some of these uh these drawings to interpret this story so and that, you know that's the spot where we're kind of down there uh, uh, scheming on things and getting our tattoos done. So that's that's kind of where we're at with that story and and kind of making it grow. So that's going to be kind of an interesting thing as the time goes on. Okay, well everybody can stay tuned. They can read that story themselves at evelynawake.com, and you should you should add them as a friend or, or like them or however that works on like Facebook. Facebook.com/slash evelynawake, and everybody should. Go to my Facebook, facebook.com slash Casey Anthem, of course. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And it's been it's definitely a pleasure to have you guys on. The phone lines are still open. We want you to call in, talk to the band, 816-399-5286. And now we're going to get to the, the more interesting current events of the week. Oh, Anybody uh-oh. know of anything going on off the top of their head right now? Oh, man. Maybe is a little interesting to talk about. Gas prices are going up. Gas prices <laughs> are definitely going up. There's a, there's a lot up. of big things going on. Yeah. Right Actually, uh-huh. you know, number one would be... Uh, Osama bin Laden is dead. Osama bin Laden is dead. That say, is what I was getting yeah. at. Yeah. Now, now there's here. one of those. It's one of those things where you gotta also look at how easy would it be to fake this. 
And the conspiracies. That and, is another here, here's issue. The here's the thing. Saddam Hussein. I mean, they showed when they got him, when they caught him, mm -hmm. you know. You hit me? Okay. <laughs> awesome. uh, okay. okay I agree. Saddam, so I already know where he's going with they this. They showed the yeah. picture immediately. They showed video of him. They got him. Here's him. Yeah. You know, they, there was a hanging <clears> video, which, you know, that's, I don't necessarily agree with that. It wasn't great, but my whole thing There's a hanging is, video of Saddam? Yeah. yeah you seen Dude, that? it was made public in here's Iraq. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Whoa. They, I didn't they, see they, that. They're saying that this whole picture and everything, they can't release it because it's, like, respectful and all that. How come they showed that picture? And how come they showed that? I think it just seems suspicious to me that they buried the body and see the next day. It is all very strange, and uh, it's it's bound to fuel conspiracies that are bigger than any other. I mean, this puts JFK on a lower level, I would say, because it's all connected with those people who believe that 9/11 was an inside job. Yeah. JFK was all, our last real president. All, I'll tell all you the that. way up to this. Why? And, and I, you may not be, you know, too far away from the truth there. Um, yeah, getting into deep. A lot of people say that was the CIA who did that, but I, I typically don't get into politics on the show. But this week is a very big deal that, that Bin Laden is dead. So it's we had to mention it here for historical purposes, and it just happened last Sunday. The last interview I did, he was alive. Now it's, it's not that we know of. That we, not, we believe it's not, that. It's not necessarily something that, that is just going to change our country. It, it could possibly change the, the, the entire world. Of the globe. Yes. It's definitely going to change. You know, I'll that. tell you. I'll tell you. Regardless of any conspiracy you believe, that guy, I don't. I didn't believe anything he stood for, and he sat there and claimed that he was behind 9-11. Even anyone that does that, just is. Yeah. Uh, he deserved to be shot between the eyes. That's as far as I'm concerned. I don't. I don't have any. Any. Any remorse for any of that i i definitely don't think that the story we're getting is what we, what what's real though yeah. i mean so, that sucks but it's so do you think they should release the pictures then that's a big <clears throat> that's how can you release the pictures when they don't exist how can you release any of that stuff when it's not the real story so i mean you can't really be a judge of it and i'll tell you what when there's a red and a blue list and the blue list are for those that don't know and the red list are for those that have been told i'll probably land on the red list because the fact of the matter is, is that you're definitely on the red list now. None of this is what it may seem, <laughs> and that's just all it goes to. I mean, that we won't see any pictures of an autopsy or bodies, even though we'll fight for it tooth and nail because it doesn't exist. So. Well, I, I, I think you know, we we as the U.S. we don't have to play down to those people. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, who cares? We took care of the problem that that hit us. Why do we have to play to you to try to prove something? Problems taken care of. The whole world knows it. His yep. group knows that it happened. Yep. Don't even worry about showing pictures. Nope. We, don't, we, we don't have to prove nothing to you because we took care of the problem. We'll move on. Well, absolutely, and I and agree. I agree with that. I agree with that. I think for people who lost their loved ones in something like 9/11, they want closure. And to see closure is the same concept of us having our families go to public or private executions and watch a man lose his life because he took their family's life. And for the people that lost their families, they want to see a dead body. They want to see the culprit accosted and handled and that's what people are fighting for right now and that's the hard part. Like go on for just yeah, well there's really no debate because as far as i'm concerned i wasn't involved in it so i can't really fight for something i wasn't involved yeah. in my right. problem is is that for those that did lose i know that even i'm sitting next to these gentlemen here and if any of these guys were to lose their lives and someone wouldn't show me the man that was responsible for it, whether he was in prison or he was dead i'd probably choke someone until they died if unless i could see the people i cared about and justice being brought in however form but you're right there shouldn't yeah. be no circus of, yeah. of a bunch of dead pictures being brought about but there should be a certain form of of showing us not the people across the seas but the people here showing ourselves like hey this is what we just did and operation so. planes you've been putting up pictures of buildings and what i could take pictures of buildings all day hmm? but that ain't proving hmm? me that that this person is gone i know that i would yeah. you know on a personal level i'd feel better I would too, but it doesn't. But it doesn't matter about if you'll feel better because it's it's a matter of Absolutely. who's going to get attacked and who's not. No, you're right. But we. But if if in in the end though, if we're if we really took out Osama bin Laden, we are subject to another attack. And I'll tell you this: when your government exchanges your freedoms 
in order to protect you and the securities that they bring to you. This is a very big pretext to bring to us, hey, we got the bad guy. Give us some more of your freedoms and we'll exchange them for the securities that we'll provide you. And I, I will look, I'll tell you this right now, watch for another attack in the next year or two. But, 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 but say oh, this. Yeah. All I want people to know is what I think is like, you know, we, we have a conscience, but they don't because all they want to do is kill us. So our conscience makes us blind because they don't care who they kill. It's like we have the conscience to try to make that decision. There, there's so you can't, you, can't, you can't try to do that because they're like, line. I'd rather kill you. So what's going to happen? Well, it's they like, look it's at they like look Batman at, complex. It's where the care. Batman villain can do whatever he wants, and Batman has to save the people, you know, in the right form and manner. Right. Man. Your family, like, and not he can't, think twice about you know, you can't kill the Joker. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, hey, we got a call. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. All right, hello. You're on the air. You're on KC Anthem with Evelyn Awake. In the right form and manner. So you what? <laughs> You're on the air. You're on KC Anthem. You're watching Evelyn Awake. Yeah, I'm watching fuck KC Anthem. Yeah, yeah. Do you got a, a question for the band? You're on the air, bro. Oh, is Jordan? Is this big nasty? Hey, you got to turn down your computer and uh, hey, fuck off. stop the feedback. And oh. and that'll help you out a lot. <laughs> How you doing, man? Is this Big Nasty? This is Sean Davis? Yeah, what's up? Hey, how you doing, man? Thanks for calling in. We were just having a heated discussion about Osama bin Laden. We're talking to Evelyn yeah. Awake here uh, on the air with Evelyn Awake. They're playing Rockfest next week. You got a question for a band or a statement? This is a, a professional wrestler, everyone. Oh, he's, right a, on. he's actually in the new Hammer Lord video. He was uh, paramount in getting the Hammer Lord video released. Wow, very done. cool. Yes. Honored Super to meet you, cool. man. What's up? Yeah, what's up? What's up, y'all? Hey, I just wanted to make a comment, man. Shut the fuck up, Jordan. What? <laughs> what do you want from me? Are you, are you? Oh, hey, fuck you too, motherfucker. Are you gonna Jordan, hit me with a chair again? Jordan keeps talking. I'm not, dude. You're, you gotta turn your computer down, man. <laughs> you're seeing shit from, from a while ago. Turn your computer down. <laughs> Hold on, man. <laughs> oh, that's too good. That's too Love good. It. All right, can you? Yes, yes. How you doing? What do you got to say? Hey, shut up, man. Besides, hey, okay. Yeah. Hey, look, I've seen, I've seen Jerry King's head blown off a million times on TV. I, 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 I deserve to see a bullet-ridden body of Osama bin Laden released uh, on CNN, MSNBC, something. Yeah, how many times have we seen the World Trade Centers crumble to the ground and know in our hearts that people are dying one at a time right there? That's right, then? but not one picture. But we can, we should be. Able to, I, I agree with you, and I also see how it could be a sensitive subject. But I feel like at least here's the deal: even if I don't get to see it or you don't get to see it, if you lost a family member, I feel like you should get to see it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree Absolutely. with you. But it's. It, I also understand both sides because I also understand what Trent's saying, where it's like, you know, we we don't have anything to prove to nobody, but maybe we need to prove to ourselves. I think. Just well, you know, the thing is, we we have the greatest military presence in the in the entire world. There's no doubt about that. Uh, I, I'm sure I'm sure we've had Navy SEALs or somebody within, you know, several feet of Osama bin Laden at any given time. Uh, it, it's funny that that it never happened during uh, uh, either Bush or uh, Clinton era, but now that uh, 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 Barack Obama is in office and he's basically Falling to the bottom of the, the public opinion poll. Now all of a sudden he comes up with this some bitch. I don't I don't believe it. I that's don't buy it. That's what I'm saying. It, it's fishy in terms of that. And it, it's one of those things where it'd be a, it'd be another good cover up to where they can also argue that they don't have to release it like what you're saying, and they don't. And and that opinion, which and it's one of those debatable subjects. I'm sure we all feel that it's strange, though, that they were able to get rid of something like that so quickly and be okay with it, though, because I even read during in, in some of the Islam comments to that were that uh, the what we called the appropriate measures to bury him at a sea burial was not appropriate in the fact that when an Islam <laughs> dies on land, he's to be buried on land. So 
I, I uh, heard a lot of different things that I don't even know enough about it to consider myself knowledgeable enough to make a an educated decision on it. However, my personal opinion would say that um, you know I would love to see that because because I'd like to sleep at night knowing that okay I was completely wrong about my conspiratic theories and I don't need to dig that far into things anymore and I don't know if they like conspiracy theories but they sure as hell like to make them bigger and bigger and bigger by not showing us things we want to know see this is the truth though because you know I, I can't I can't speak it verbatim look it up though Clinton had the had the opportunity to give the, the kill shot with Navy SEALs it didn't happen. They were mad about it. And, uh, you know, as far as burying him at sea, it's like, get rid of the body. Get rid of it. Don't have a, you know, a Jim Morrison burial where people will come and have, you know, this big shrine, shrine, yeah, this shrine, shrine of a to, martyr. To someone who's fucking you, evil. You, you, you can't, you can't give that, you can't he give that He is a martyr by them. definition. Just, but that's, but that's By okay. their standards. But the thing is, is just don't give them that shrine. Don't, if they come here... You got to go in. You got to take care of the problem. Get rid of it and get out. That's the thing. Don't don't worry about it. Take uh, care. Well, of it. we've definitely gone head first into politics on this Absolutely. issue. <laughs> I guess I'll go. I'll throw my two cents out there. I'm an Iraq veteran, and I want to see the damn pictures. I I fought, you know, these wars mm -hmm. fought yeah. in a war because of that man yeah. directly, yeah. and I want to know that that he's gone for sure. And Mission not, accomplished not have, for you. Yeah. Not just have the the uh, government tell me that he's gone. Absolutely, because yeah. the government tells me all kinds of things. But that but, I don't but the Absolutely. but but the terrorist group that he went for came out and said he's he's done we right it's tell not it. that i don't believe that he's dead but it's unprecedented to have uh the most wanted man in the world be dead and not get uh visual no. and that, evidence and that's on the Absolutely. president now and no one can make judgments make your own judgments but that's on him thinking that right that yeah. is the best for our troops trying to do the best retaliate thing. yeah or the people that they have taken hostage they'll do the same things to them and not keep them alive now so the that's, that's the thing now the swing this to a different subject you're a professional wrestler, right? Yeah. I'm gonna have to thumb war you. <laughs> I feel like that's that's in our this, this man is is a big man. Uh, it's okay because you know. I'm Nick Nick prides himself <laughs> on having these like really mutant thumbs, so Nick would never think that he could out wrestle yeah. you, Nick's but he good. might be able to out thumb war you. And it's one of those things where I like these weird myself. fucking giant and, thumbs. And I feel like you'd be a great challenge, and I think we should make it happen. There you go. What do you have to say about hey, that? Hey, what? I think. Hey, well, we can do a live. We, we can do a live on KC Anthem, man. Yeah, I love yeah, that. Let's yeah. set Absolutely, that up. would love that. Intermission of a of okay. A band interview. That's happening. That's done. Yeah, it's it's a deal. It's I gonna think, happen. I do want to have you on, uh, Sean, to talk to you about the Hammer Ward video and whatnot. I do thank you for helping with that. And uh, yeah, thanks, for, time. thanks for calling in and stirring the pot on the Bin Laden situation. I think we got all the politics out of us today. <laughs> Good to meet you, dude. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah, you too, man. All right, take it easy. Practice. All right, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Uh oh, uh, you are calling him. Uh, is if you beat him at Thumb War, Go he's gonna it. body slam you. So, <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, good luck in the Thumb War. Because it's awesome. Yeah. Boom. No idea. He already knows. He's Done. like, mm. yeah. If hey, you see these thumbs, though, dude, yeah, I'm yeah, telling you, it's like freakish, man. <laughs> thanks that for, weird thanks thing. for watching, everyone. We're gonna start wrapping it up here. If, if we haven't talked about something that you wanted to mention. We, we should mention that now. You've got uh, your CD release coming up. Obviously, you've got Rock Fest next week, which uh, everybody knows about that if they're in, from Kansas City, yeah, for sure. Yeah. They've heard your name now. It's, it's probably going to be huge for you, good for you. I hope so. Um, we, uh, we, we all kind of do – we're all dedicated and focused to our passion, which is Evelyn Awake. Um, the three of us, Nick, Rory, and I, uh, do, a, do a cover band, and we try to play around the city all the time. It's called Cover Me Bad. Okay. Um, we're really it's a, it's a more of a fun thing man we, we really do this we this is some of our money maker and some of what we do to kind of enjoy just playing cover songs and, and uh, we love playing music yeah we love being in front of people so if you guys time. can request uh, if you guys do the Facebook thing whether it's Nick Marshall Rory Sirks S-I-E-R-C-K-S because I always do K without the C-K-S Lion S-I-R-C-K-S 
S I E R C K S. I'm sorry. <laughs> and Tyler well, Lyon. Listen, I'm trying every time. Over from Germany Look, and just you call me Tyler Lyon, and I, you're, Lyon. Ronald, you're Ronald Starks. Lyon, man. Lyon, Lyon, Any of us on the Facebook, you guys can check out Cover Me Bad. And uh, ultimately, please come out to Evelyn Awake Show anytime you can. I also like to give a shout out to Unleashed Tattoo. They're our main sponsor right now, and they've been helping us out a lot. And you know, we're all getting our tattoos from there. So if you guys need some tattoos, they're great artists. The guy Brett works there. There's a yep. couple other great artists. You guys want to come down and see us, we'll probably be hanging out there. So yep. come on down. And then, uh, absolutely. Uh, tonight, like, if you're online, check out Facebook, Reverb Nation, uh, Evelyn Awake on any of those. Uh, MySpace. Uh, we have a Twitter. If you guys are on Twitter, check out twitter.com slash Evelyn Awake. Hmm. Uh, if you want to come see the cover band, we're actually playing tonight at John's Upper Deck at 9th and Wyandotte. There's no cover, I don't think. Is there a cover tonight? There you go. No cover? Tonight, uh, even. So where, where's yeah. that at? I mean, people. John, John's Upper Deck, 9th and Wyandotte. 9th and Wyandotte. We're going to okay. be up on the roof playing. We're going to be doing all your favorite it's cover actually, songs. It's a, little, it's a little different than Evelyn Awake. He actually plays drums in this thing. And I'm the guitar like player, but I'm playing bass tonight. And I'll play yeah. guitar and sing. Sometimes I'll switch. I'll play some drums. Yeah. We'll, we all it's, switch up. Dude. It's a cool way to come hang out with us and still kind of keep up with what's going on with Evelyn Awake in the meantime while we're not playing and kind of and, and just, you know, enjoy yourselves with us. So come out and hang out with us. Ninth and Wyandotte. There you go. Head out the door right now. I want to say next weekend we've got Mitten All on the show. It's a death metal band. It's going to be Friday the 13th. It's going to be Uh-oh. very awesome. Uh-oh. And then we've got Canvas Shit, coming on the weekend after that. It's going to be a, a live performance as well, an acoustic performance. Very and, cool. And did Canvas we want, guys will did be with us in that? June. I think you wanted us to. Okay, I think we're going to end the show with an acoustic performance. How about we play one more song, and during that time period, you're going to get set up. We're going to come back. We're going to have an acoustic performance to end the show. Sweet. Okay. So very, very awesome. Stay tuned for a little while, and we'll be back. Do you have a restroom? Nice. And we're clear. Woman's forsaken us Won't even tell me her name She cries and she cries Oh so constantly Always just passing the blame
right, that was that was Evelyn Awake, everyone. We're still trying to get set up. We're going to play one more song for you, so stay tuned. We're going to have acoustic performance in just a second. Clarity, the song is called Fly Away. You find it on YouTube, Facebook, I think. Some shit like that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Thank you very much for coming on, guys. Evelyn and Wake, everyone. Woo! Thank you, Evelyn we'll and see Wake. you guys soon. Yeah. <laughs> Hitting on next week, everyone. Thanks for watching KC Anthem.